In a display of arrogance, Professor Olov boasted about his intellect while belittling Mariana Polinakosa and her son, Hawk. He clarified that her escape had nearly jeopardized his standing among the Russian elite who had employed him. However, he also emphasized that no one could perform his duties, particularly regarding the ongoing project to create controlled super soldiers. Within 30 minutes, they arrived at Science City. However, this differed from the Science City in Siberia. Instead, it was one of the numerous underground hubs worldwide. Sharing the same architectural design, they found the themselves encased in a formidable shielded glass enclosure for the professor recognized and respected their strength and capabilities and did not underestimate them. Back then, the professor was working on the creation of superhuman soldiers. His pursuit of this goal led him to discover Anna Polina Koza. Her emergence marked the last representative of a vanishing lineage from her village. When Anna managed to escape from Science City, the project involving the development of superhuman soldiers was temporarily halted. Instead, Professor Olov shifted his focus to artificial intelligence, resulting in the creation of super androids. Hawk had already encountered one of them, his long lost brother, Tom. The question I'm asking is, couldn't Hawk smell rubber despite the androids being meticulously designed for his nefarious task? There was a notable issue. These androids had a limited shell life of 15 months and the costs associated with upgrading them were exorbitant posing significant financial challenges this predicament placed professor olov in a precarious position with the influential secret figures within the kremlin the order had been issued to terminate his artificial intelligence project unless he could produce substantial results however the professor had different intentions an extensive plans involving Marianne and her son. Firstly, Professor Olof will dissect Anna, for she was deemed useless as she had passed her child-bearing age. Nevertheless, examining her genes and DNA for further research was deemed necessary. As for Hawk, he was considered the suitable specimen, and work must commence immediately. Hawk's unique genetic material will be used in a controlled program involving selected female military volunteers who will undergo artificial insemination. The aim is to create super soldiers akin to him. The primary motivation for Professor Olov and the secret elites behind this project is cost effectiveness. These super soldiers required no battery, no battery recharging or mechanical maintenance. They embody unparalleled prowess. In his ambiguous display of arrogance, Olov continued mocking and taunting Marianne. He questioned whether she felt at home in her former cell, emphasizing the futility of her escape years ago. This infuriated Hawk, who made determined efforts to break free from the reinforced glass enclosure. However, it became evident that the cell had been meticulously designed to withstand his extraordinary strength and power. You should know that Professor Olov is Hawk's father. For back then, when Marianne Polinakosa was his prisoner, they had a consummate relationship while experimenting on her. Knowing the kind of man the professor is, she decided to escape from the prison she was being held in when she found out she was pregnant. In her vulnerable state, she pleaded with the professor to release their son, but he had more elaborate plans for him. As mentioned earlier, the professor's project faced imminent shutdown due to exorbitant costs associated with maintaining an android, which typically lasted for a maximum of 15 months. This financial aspect didn't bother Professor Olov at all. What truly enraged him was the absence of trust and faith in his abilities. He attributed this lack of confidence to the Russian elite's absence of foresight, for they were short-sighted in his own perspective. 
perspective. Moreover, the representative responsible for budgeting his project's finances displayed a similar, if not worse, attitude which further exacerbated his frustration. Now, news of his progress had made its way to the Kremlin and everyone was extending their admiration to him as if he were a revered figure. The respect he garnered was a significant change from the years of ridicule he endured from the very individuals who funded his projects, specifically those entrenched in the corridors of powers within the Kremlin. Due to his current achievements, the professor received a request from the president for a private presidential dinner. Nevertheless, the devious professor harbored his own ambition. To understand his point of view, he had endured years of belittlement within elite circles, even though he was among the elite. Worst of all, they had dispatched a disrespectful representative to impede his projects financially, an act the professor regarded as treacherous and reprehensible. By tarnishing his reputation as a respected and brilliant scientist in society, the professor ordered his men to eliminate the disrespectful representative who pleaded for his life. However, before he could make the professor comprehend his perspective, his lifeless body was cast aside, leaving behind a vow that he would never permit those in the corridors of power in the Kremlin to gain control over his controlled super soldiers. In a manner befitting a classic villain, the professor harbored ambitions of world domination. The sole thought occupying Hawk's mind was escaped the glass shielded cell. Despite his efforts, he found it impossible to break through the glass. Even his extraordinary strength proved futile at this critical moment. He began to closely inspect the glass. At the same time, his long lost android brother Tom taunted him, making it clear that he was aware of Hawk's powers, primarily centered around locating lost objects, and that his mother, Marianne Polina Hosa, possessed the ability to control people with her touch. Tom asserted that there were no conceivable way for Hawk to escape or break free from the glass shielded cell. Hawk attempted to negotiate with Tom, the android, proposing that he could assist in locating someone as intelligent as Professor Olov to help him address Tom's issue of not lasting beyond 15 months. All Hawk required was Tom's help in escaping the prison. However, to Hawk's astonishment, his long lost android ex brother scoffed at him and his seemingly brilliant plan. Tom clarified that he had been purposefully designed to track down Hawk and had little concern for his own shell life as he considered himself no different than any machine nearing its expiration date. In an attempt to make Hawk's life in the glass shielded cell more unbearable, Tom began taunting his mother, insinuating that she was responsible for his imprisonment. True to his words, she agreed and took the blame upon herself, expressing regret for not protecting her son adequately. How Ever. Hawk had little patience for such discussions, especially from his depressed and disheartened mother. She was fully aware of the professor's capabilities and the boundaries he wouldn't hesitate to cross in the name of science. She recognized he was unhinged and gone beyond the limits of reasoning. What struck her as shocking was her son Hawk's remarkable forgiveness and understanding, even though she had abandoned him as an infant. Needless to say, Hawk conveyed to her that she was the reason he was alive today and he comprehended her actions in aiding his survival from the clutches of the professor. Despite the challenging circumstances, they found a way to bond as mother and son. She confided that she had been living in hiding for years in America, adopting the guise of a music teacher and imparting violin lessons to children. Meanwhile, Tom persistently attempts to provoke Hawk, initially met with indifference but eventually succeeded in getting under Hawk's skin. Android Tom persisted in his efforts and told Hawk that he would consider himself fortunate as he would have the opportunity to be with numerous female military volunteers. He advised Hawk not to be bashful, emphasizing that he would do it for Mother Russia's sake. Suddenly, Hawk found the solution he needed to escape from the confines of the glass shielded cell. He decided to attempt breaking down the walls with his bare hands. 
Android Tom dismissed this as impossible, believing Hawk wasn't strong enough. However, Hawk proved him wrong by asking his mother, who possessed the power to control people with her touch, to command him to break the walls down. Meanwhile, Professor Holov was preparing to leave Science City for a private dinner meeting with the president of Russia. Unexpectedly, a disturbance animated from the basement where Hawk and his mother were being held captive. This noise grew steadily louder until it evolved into a powerful tremor, shaking everything in its vicinity. The growing disturbance and tremors resulted from Hawk's relentless efforts to break the glass shielded cell in which he was confined. He instructed his mother to continue using her powers on him despite enduring intense pain. Fortunately for Hawk, he could heal rapidly rendering the pain a minor concern. While Tom pleaded with him to seize his action, warning that he might bring down the entire building down upon them, Hawk pressed on. In a powerful display of strength, he shattered the glass shielded cell, impacting the apartment. Then, Hawk stood tall in the presence of Android Tom, his long-lost Android ex-brother.